Welcome to Advanced Learning Tutoring. This is the Chemistry Playlist. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Reactivity of metals. Different metals have different reactivities and hence can be placed in order of most reactive metal to least reactive metal. We refer to this as the reactivity series of metals, starting with the most reactive metal of potassium. There are other metals that are more reactive than potassium, but for GCSE, knowledge of potassium being highly reactive is necessary. The least reactive metal, we refer to that of gold or platinum. Gold and platinum are unreactive. They are found as the native form of their elements in the ground. Knowledge of the reactivity series helps with the understanding of where we obtain metals. Metals are useful substance in day-to-day -day life and we need to know where we get them from. Metals are found in ores, which are rocks that contain metal compounds. We extract the ore from the ground, remove the rock and follow a series of extraction processes to separate the metal from the compound. This can be done by either displacement with carbon or a more reactive metal, or by the process of electrolysis, which is used for those metals more reactive than carbon. Metal oxides are formed when metal reacts with oxygen to form the metal oxide. Oxidation is the process of gaining oxygen. Reduction is the process of losing oxygen. In the process of forming a metal oxide, we say that the metal has been oxidised. The reactivity series and displacement. The reactivity series is the order of the most reactive to the least reactive metals, based on the tendency of the metal to lose electrons to form positive ions. At this stage, recall that metals and nonmetals react to try and get a full outer shell of electrons and metals do this by losing electrons. Displacement reactions occur when a more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal from a compound. For example, magnesium plus iron sulphate forms magnesium sulphate plus iron. Iron in this reaction is less reactive than magnesium and is hence displaced. Extraction of metals and reduction. Unreactive metals such as gold are found in earth as the metal itself, but most metals are found as compounds that require chemical reactions to extract. Metals less reactive than carbon can be extracted from their oxides by reduction with carbon. Remember, Reduction is the process of removing oxygen. Metals more reactive than carbon can be extracted by electrolysis, using an electric current to separate your compound. Oxidation can also be described as the process of losing electrons, and reduction is the process of gaining electrons. An example of a displacement reaction, copper sulphate plus magnesium forms copper plus magnesium sulphate. Magnesium is more reactive than copper, hence copper is displaced. We can represent this as a half equation, only focusing that on the ions that have reacted or formed. Copper is a two plus ion when in a compound, so copper two plus plus Mg magnesium, which is a solid, forms copper in the solid state as it's not bonded to anything else, plus Mg2+, which is the magnesium ion, as in magnesium sulphate. Copper 2 plus has formed copper, Cu. The copper ions have been reduced. The copper 2 plus ions have gained electrons to form copper. And the magnesium metal has been oxidized as it's reacted and lost electrons to form the Mg2 plus ion. Reactions of acids. 
Acids typically take place in neutralisation reactions, where you either add an alkali or a base to neutralise an acid. To define an acid, we think of examples of common acids found in the lab. Hydrochloric, HCl, sulfuric, H2SO4, and nitric acid, HNO3. The common ion that links all of these acids is the hydrogen H plus ion. By definition, all acids form H plus ions in aqueous solution. These can be neutralized with the addition of an alkali or a base, which are found at the opposite side of the pH scale, to form a neutral solution of pH 7. Acids react with metals to form salt and hydrogen. An acid plus metal forms salt plus hydrogen gas. This is an example of a redox reaction. A redox reaction is one in which both oxidation and reduction take place. The more reactive the metal, the more vigorous the reaction. We would see this by more hydrogen gas being released. In neutralisation reactions, acids are neutralised by alkalis, which are soluble metal hydroxides, for example sodium hydroxide, and bases, which tend to be solids. Examples include metal oxides, metals and metal carbonates to produce salt and water. In the case of metal carbonates, it produces salt water and carbon dioxide. To name the salts formed when acids react with either alkalis or bases, it all depends on the acid used. Hydrochloric acids form chloride salts, sulfuric acid forms sulfate salts, and nitric acid forms nitrate salts. By definition, a salt is one in which the hydrogen ion from the acid is replaced by the metal from the alkali or base. Making soluble salts. Required practical. Soluble meaning your salt dissolves in solution, in water. So therefore the salt that is formed will always have to be removed from the water by the process of evaporation. The steps involved in making a soluble salt will be reacting an acid with an excess of base. That base may be a metal, a metal oxide or metal carbonate until no more base reacts. An example may be forming copper sulfate crystals from sulfuric acid forming the sulfate and copper oxide, your base. Copper oxide is a solid, you add excess, meaning more than you need, to your sulfuric acid. Put the sulfuric acid in a beaker, add your excess base with a spatula until no more dissolves. Then we want to filter this. We filter the mixture through a filter funnel using filter paper and a conical flask. Collect the filtrate, which is the solution left behind, which should just be your copper sulfate solution, as you will be removing any unreacted base. Heat the solution to start evaporating the water. Use a Bunsen burner, heat up a beaker of water, place an evaporating basin or evaporating dish on top of the beaker of boiling water. In the evaporating basin, you add your copper sulfate solution or your salt solution. Heat until the majority of the water has evaporated off. Turn off the heat and leave to crystallize. Leave to crystallize in a warm, dry place, for example, near a window. pH scale and neutralization. The pH scale is a measurement of how acidic or how alkaline a solution is. The H in the pH refers to the hydrogen ion concentration. 
All acids produce H plus ions in aqueous solutions. Alkalis produce hydroxide, OH minus ions, in aqueous solutions. pH can be measured using universal indicator or a pH probe. The ionic equation for neutralization is H plus plus OH minus forms H2O. A strong acid is completely ionized in aqueous solution. For example, hydrochloric, nitric and sulfuric acids are strong acids. Strong acids have a pH between 0 and 3. A weak acid is partially ionized in aqueous solution. This means not all of the H plus ions in the acid are dissociated from the rest of the compound. Examples include ethanoic, citric and carbonic acids. Weak acids typically have a pH between 4 and 6. As the pH decreases by one unit, for example going from pH 2 to pH 1, you've made your acid stronger, the hydrogen ion concentration increases by a factor of 10. An example, a pH of 1 gives a hydrogen ion concentration of 0.1 mole per decimeter. As you increase this pH to pH 2, therefore making it a weaker acid, the hydrogen ion concentration will decrease. pH of 2 has a hydrogen ion concentration of 0.01 mole per decimeter. You have decreased your hydrogen ion concentration by a factor of 10 as you are increasing the pH from 1 to 2, making it a weaker acid. Titrations. Titrations are a method used to calculate the concentration of an unknown acid or alkali when you know the concentration of the other acid or alkali in the reaction. It involves a neutralization reaction between your acid and alkali. To determine when a solution is neutral, you would use an indicator. The indicator used in titrations is typically phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is pink in alkali solutions and colourless when neutral. The method for a titration involves the use of a burette, which is a measuring equipment used to measure volume, a pipette. Now this is a glass pipette that is a more accurate way of measuring volume versus a measuring cylinder, and a conical flask. Use the pipette and pipette filler to add 25 centimeters cubed of alkali to a clean conical flask. To this, add your indicator of phenolphthalein. A few drops are used. Place the conical flask on a white tile so you can see the color of the indicator more easily. Fill the burette with acid and note the starting volume. Slowly add the acid from the burette to the alkali in the conical flask swirling the conical flask to mix, allowing all of the reactant particles to react. Stop adding the acid when the end point is reached and you see the appropriate colour change. Note down the final volume reading. This will be your rough titer. Following this, you repeat the above steps. When you near the rough titer volume, you start turning your burette so that you add the volume of the acid dropwise. This gives a more accurate reading of volume. You're then able to take an average, a mean calculation of the tighter volumes you have added, thus getting a consistent reading. You will use the concordant results which are those results that are within 0.1 cm3 of each other to calculate the average volume required. Titration calculations. 27.5 cm3 
was your average titer measurement of the volume of hydrochloric acid required to neutralize 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. 27.5 centimeters cubed of 0.2 mole per decimeter solution of hydrochloric acid is needed to titrate 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution. What is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution? Step one, convert all volumes to decimeters cubed. A reminder, one decimeter cubed equals 1,000 centimeters cubed. 27.5 centimeters cubed divided by 1,000 gives a volume of 0.0275 decimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. 25 divided by 1,000 gives a volume of 0.025 decimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. Step two, calculate the number of moles of the substance where the volume and concentrations are known. We know the concentration of hydrochloric acid, therefore we can calculate number of moles of hydrochloric acid. Number of moles equals concentration times volume. The moles of hydrochloric acid is 0.2 multiplied by 0.0275, giving us 0.0055 moles of hydrochloric acid. Looking at the balanced symbol equation, we understand that hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide react in a one-to-one -one ratio meaning the moles of hydrochloric acid will react with the same number of moles of alkali, sodium hydroxide. So 0.0055 moles of hydrochloric acid will react with 0.0055 moles of sodium hydroxide. To calculate concentration, you do moles divided by volume. The moles of sodium hydroxide are 0.0055 divided by the volume of sodium hydroxide which is 0.025 decimeters cubed. Divide 0.0055 by 0.025 to get a concentration of 0.22 mol per decimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. Electrolysis a reminder, electrolysis is a process of extracting metals. These are for extracting the metals that are more reactive than carbon on the reactivity series. When an ionic compound is melted or dissolved in water, the ions are free to move about within the liquid or solution and conduct electricity. These liquids are called electrolytes and will be used in the electrolysis process. We must use an ionic compound as an ionic compound is made up of metal and non-metal ions. Passing an electric current through the electrolytes causes the ions to move towards the electrodes. Electrodes are substances that conduct electricity. They will be conducted to a DC direct current power supply and dipped into your electrolyte. Positively charged ions move to the negative electrode, the cathode, and negatively charged ions move towards the positive electrode, the anode. At the electrodes, ions will gain or lose electrons to produce the elements. When a simple ionic compound, for example lead bromide, is electrolyzed in the molten stage, molten meaning melted, using inert electrodes, inert meaning unreactive, the metal, lead, is produced at the cathode and the non-metal, bromine, is produced at the anode. Metals can be extracted from molten compounds using electrolysis. Electrolysis is used if the metal is more reactive than carbon. Large amounts of energy are used in the extraction process to melt compounds 
and produce the electrical current, which may be seen as the disadvantage of electrolysis. Aluminium is a really useful metal that is manufactured by the process of electrolysis using a molten mixture of aluminium oxide and a substance called cryolite using a carbon anode. Electrolysis of aqueous solutions. These are those when the electrolyte is in an aqueous solution. So you have dissolved your ionic compound in water, meaning not only do you have the ions from your ionic compound, but you also have the ions in water, H plus and OH minus ions. The ions discharged when an aqueous solution is electrolyzed depend on the relative reactivity of the elements involved. So you have your ions from your ionic compound, the metal and the non-metal ion, and also the ions H plus and OH minus from the water. At the negative electrode, the cathode, hydrogen is produced if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen. And we see this from the reactivity series. At the positive electrode, the anode, oxygen is produced unless the solution contains halide ions. Then the halogen is produced. This happens because in aqueous solution, water molecules break down, producing the hydrogen and hydroxide ions that are discharged. Half equations can be used to represent the reactions that take place at each electrode. At the positive electrode, the negative ions are attracted and lose electrons. At the negative electrode, positive ions are attracted and gain electrons. To note, oxidation is the process of losing electrons and reduction is the process of gaining electrons. Therefore, at the negative electrode, where the positive ion is attracted, you will be gaining electrons and this process will be reduction. At the positive electrode, ions will lose electrons and this process will be oxidation. The electrolysis of molten aluminium oxide and cryolite. We use molten aluminium oxide as opposed to aqueous aluminium oxide, as if we use aqueous aluminium oxide, hydrogen gas would be produced at the negative electrode in place of aluminium. The whole point of the electrolysis of aluminium oxide is to obtain pure aluminium. Hydrogen would be produced because aluminium is more reactive than hydrogen. Therefore, we melt aluminium oxide. As aluminium oxide is an ionic compound, it has an incredibly high melting point, which is why we use a substance called cryolite. This lowers the overall melting point of aluminium oxide so you can melt at a lower temperature. To note, we need the electrolyte to be molten so that the ions are free to move to conduct electricity. A carbon anode is used. Now this carbon anode is formed of graphite. Graphite is an allotrope of carbon that conducts electricity. During the electrolysis of aluminium oxide, aluminium ions, aluminium three plus ions, are attracted to the negative electrode. Here, they will gain three electrons to form aluminium, which is a solid. This process of gaining electrons is called reduction. At the positive electrode, oxide ions, O2 minus ions, are attracted. As the anode is made of graphite, which is a form of carbon, the carbon will react with the oxygen formed. The oxide ions, O2 minus, will lose electrons to form oxygen gas, reacting with the carbon, ultimately forming carbon dioxide gas, which is lost. This loses carbon atoms from the electrode. 
Therefore, the carbon electrode will have to be replaced over time as it wears away. The electrolysis of sodium chloride solution. In this electrolysis, we use a solution. The solution means we are using water to dissolve our sodium chloride. We have the ions Na plus Cl minus from the sodium chloride and also H plus and OH minus from the water. These ions are in the electrolyte. At the positive electrode, chloride ions are attracted. Cl minus ions lose electrons to form chlorine. Chlorine is a diatomic molecule and chlorine has the formula Cl2. At room temperature, chlorine is a gas. You will observe a gas or bubbles forming at the positive electrode. At the negative electrode, as hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, hydrogen is formed. H plus ions gain electrons to form hydrogen. Hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. At room temperature and pressure, the formula of hydrogen is H2. It's a gas, so you will observe bubbles forming at the negative electrode. Leaving sodium and hydroxide ions in solution. The formula for sodium hydroxide is NaOH. The hydrogen can be used as a fuel. The chlorine can be used in the production of bleach and the sodium hydroxide that remains in solution can be used in the production of cleaning products.